What up, y'all? It's your boy, the one and only A Switch, aka Candyman, but I don't got no candy. <laughs> but I got these hands, though. <laughs> aka, uh, let me give you these knees, uh, so you can see these degrees. Aka. Let me lick your, let me lick that booty chin though. (laughs) Bringing you yet another episode of Switch of Sights. Episode 45 to be exact. Getting up there. Getting up there. About to get in them dirty thirties where, you know, you be getting all, you know, promiscuous and um, in tune with yourself and all that. You know, I'm just, I'm just saying 50, 50 is a new 30, you know, <laughs> but I digress. Um, yeah, today's date is, uh, March 5th, 2020. Happy, uh, March. Oh uh, boy. That onslaught of great, lovely, fantastical games is is close you hear me eminent it is it is close it, it breathing it's right behind me breathing down my neck it's so damn close it, it is crazy you know I'm sorry just have to just have to pause and acknowledge that that's all I'm saying So, um, got a pretty interesting show for you today. Um, so, uh, let's stop the dilly dallying and get into it. So, uh, probably the first, I'd say biggest news, uh, at least that got me personally, um, is, uh, according to Insider, uh, aesthetic gamer, AKA dust golem will be having all them exclusive deets, uh, regarding resident evil, uh, in particular. And I guess presumably all Capcom, not necessarily all Capcom, but mainly resident evil focused in, you know, some of the lingering games like dino crisis and Oni mission stuff. Um, kind of, uh, I guess, hyped up some folks and, uh, definitely broke some hearts for sure. Uh, so in a tweet, um, recently within, uh, earlier this week, uh, he, he, he basically, he, he, uh, he, he brought us down to earth. So at least the first detail in particular, um, Cole Veronica, I'm gonna start with the bad news. Uh, Cole Veronica is not in production right now, not even in pre-production. So, uh, I guess that kind of debunks the rumors about resident evil, um, resident evil, uh, Cole Veronica remake, you know, being currently in the works with that one, uh, actor, presumably, um, that was looked a lot like Alexia Asford from Cole Veronica, but apparently that might, uh, looks to not be the case. So, huh? Interesting. Uh, even, even more devastating. Uh, a dino crisis game actually was started a few years ago, uh, but then scrapped and buried and the franchise for now is still extinct for the time being. I don't like how they used extinct. I don't like that. I don't like how you use extinct to describe dino crisis. That's, that's a thumbs down right there. That's a thumb. That's a thumbs down. (laughs) But, um, yeah, that's a little disappointing. I have to say Dino crisis, Dino crisis dream is, uh, it's been squashed, been squashed. Kind of hurts, man. It seemed like now was a better time than ever to, to, to bring Dino crisis in the mix, but, uh, at least it, it, it does express that, um, that uh 
Final Crisis was thought of or highly considered or, you know, technically worked on at some point. So at least it's not completely out of Capcom's uh, mind um, in regards to a uh, consideration of a reboot in the future, but I'm pretty sure it's the time. It's a matter of when more than if now, obviously. So at least it's not all bad, but uh, what's even more interesting in terms of what was revealed was apparently, uh, excuse me. Um, next year, this is the most vaguest, but most enticing and exciting statement I've heard in a while. The next year is going to be a pretty crazy time to be a Resident Evil fan. So that's that's very hard to imp- interpret uh, for a statement, um, because it it could it could go so many ways. So, but I mean, obviously, he's can't reveal all the deets or all the details, but um, this this points to a lot of possibilities. Um, uh, I guess one, it could be Resident Evil Revelations three, but I don't think statement doesn't necessarily line up with that. I don't, I don't feel, I mean, revelations would be cool, welcomed, but it wouldn't be like, oh man, this is hype. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Resident Evil Revelations three. Yes. I, I don't really get that, that instinct when I hear, if I were to hear that. They're like, oh, okay, all right, cool. Um, so I doubt it's that. Um, the other possibility, which you know, I would be, I would throw this damn table, even though the table won't move. Uh, for is a uh, Resident Evil outbreak reboot or continuation thereof. I mean, is it, it, it now's the time more than ever. You, we 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 covering all the Resident Evil Two remake, Resident Evil Three remake, basically back in the uh, Raccoon City, um, you know storyline, revisiting it. Hey, why not revisit Resident Evil Outbreak? Tell me, man, a game that was super ahead of its time, um, just 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 came out way ahead of its time. People, uh broadband was just like starting and it was in its infancy really uh it was very you know very rare to for a uh, household to have broadband uh internet um which is now it's like a necessity versus you know back in like 2005 ish 2000 2004 actually no 2003 uh, at least was when like you started, you know, getting Xbox with Xbox Live and then PlayStation kind of uh, following suit with their um, uh, network adapter attachment that lets you play, you know, games like SOCOM. Um, what was another notable one? Uh, Tony Hawk, uh, Tony Hawk's Underground, uh, I believe Final Fantasy 11. And uh, of course, Resident Evil Outbreak and uh, Outbreak File 2. So... Um, yeah, man, I think now in the environment we're in, where it's a uh, very strongly multiplayer focused, um, not totally, um, you know, without single player games, but definitely I would say that the market is more dominated, uh, by multiplayer games than single player games. Uh, but you know, there is still your, your fix out there. There is still the single player games, but majority is multiplayer focus i feel um so i think now is definitely the perfect time uh for for outbreak to come back uh multiplayer traditional resident evil game um it on paper it just sounds so damn good and even in practice back back in the day it was fantastic um so it's hard for me to not see them do that, but I guess you know I'm speaking from from a from a biased standpoint, admittedly. But um, it just seems so like so much of a home run. Why wouldn't they do it? Especially capitalizing on the, the 
the Raccoon City era yet again, revisiting uh, and remaking these games um, only makes sense to me, I think. But I digress. Uh, well, only time will tell. But I think people are actually saying that it could potentially be something else entirely, um, which is kind of what what I'm starting to speculate as well. If it's not a Resident Evil outbreak or a continuation of it, um, I don't know. Maybe they're taking up on a on a, at least I, I'd say a, a lot of folks I know, include myself in terms of voice and opinion on like, you know, for the super actiony, um, not really so horry Resident Evil games to spin it off into its own game that maybe they went that route, maybe possibly. Um, I think Resident Evil eight is very far off. I don't think it's as close as people are suspecting it. So I doubt it's Resident Evil eight. Um, yeah, it's hard to say, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I do not know, but it's something. It's definitely something. I guess it they didn't debunk they didn't debunk it being a remake. And at least those actors uh that, you know, uh in terms of rumors or the actor that kind of spurted out that they they are working on another remake. Um I guess it could be they might potentially be remaking the first Resident Evil, maybe. Um, that's mm, that's what I would think. Uh, I guess I they could be remaking Resident Evil Four, but it's like uh, I don't know. I don't feel like that game deserves to be remade until like another what five ten years from now. Um, it's just, well, that on top of it is just perfection and just the scariness of just kind of tarnishing gold, um, platinum even, uh, just does not seem, uh, too, too good of an idea, but you know, Hey, it's Capcom. They might do what they know. We'll buy it again for like the 20th time, technically, even though it's a remake, uh, I don't know. It could be anything at this point because, uh, yeah, we, we don't really have too many indications outside of, yeah, those voice actors, or I think, um, real time models or models for the characters in the game. Um, what it could be. Yeah. I guess that girl could be Rebecca chambers. Maybe, um, apparently it's not Cole Veronica. So I don't know, man. It is, uh, I am very curious as to what could be very curious, super, super curious, super, super curious, but I thought that was fascinating to know, man, next year is going to be a crazy time to be a Resident Evil fan. Next year is in 2021. Hmm. Yeah, man, that's hard to interpret. That really is. Maybe it's the abundance of Resident Evil games we're going to get. Maybe we're going to get a combination of a uh, totally brand new Resident Evil as well as a port. Ah, maybe, maybe. I think some people were saying that you could probably be, maybe it's going to be a straight up Wesker game where you can literally play as Wesker. But then it's like, oh, I guess it could still work. You're just evil, but you're fighting evil as well. You're evil, but you're fighting your own abominations. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, man, it's going to be pretty damn interesting, man. I am very fascinated with what this could be. It's driving me crazy. Driving me crazy. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. I personally want what I would want most, at least, is definitely Outbreak to come back for sure. Um, but man, I don't know. Just this, this terminology is throwing me all kinds of off. It's going to be a pretty crazy time to be a resident evil fan. Yeah. That is such a damn subjective statement, but Hey, got to take it for what you can. Um, 
but yeah, I guess enough enough of me gushing over the possibilities of what that statement entails. Um, next topic of discussion: uh, Ghost of Tsushima uh, came out of the darkness out of nowhere today uh, and just dropped a release date of uh, June twenty sixth, twenty twenty. Uh, that's pretty surprising. Did not expect it to come out that soon, but apparently they are pretty much done or close to it. Um, I believe they dropped a trailer as well, but I didn't get a chance to view it before, before recording. Um, but yeah, looking, looking great. And then they also dropped the collector's edition, special edition. Oh, that mask though. That's a Kai mask though. Looking kind of nice. That's looking kind of nice. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah. Overall, man, the game just looks stunning. Looks just ridiculously good. Just want to lick my screen. I want to lick this screen right now. All this, all this visual eye candy. But I won't. I'll contain myself. Moving on. Uh, next topic of discussion. Um, Red 13 won't be playable in Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Um, so according uh, to an interview uh, via VG247, I believe on, from the director, um, we felt... The point at which Red 13 joins the party in the story is very late on, so we thought, okay, if we're going to have him as a full character and try and get the player to enjoy his character development arc and growth as a character through that, it's not really enough time to do that. Final Fantasy VII Remake co-director Naoki Hamaguchi told VG247. So, um... And I guess to kind of a little bit elaborate on that more in another statement, quote, we thought that the best way to have him involved was as a guest character. Normally, throughout the game, you'll be playing as a three-man party, but you will have him as a guest character that fights alongside you during the last part of the story. Hamaguchi elaborated. He'll be using all of his old, really nostalgic moves, and you'll see that. We felt that that was the best way of showing him off as a character and who he is. And that's why we felt that was the best way to include him. Huh. So it's fine. I mean, personally, it's fine. I mean, obviously we know it's going to be a, a part series, which part of, I mean, to be honest, a, a very secluded part of me is kind of hoping that it would, uh, it would they'd be like, ah, we just joking. Bam. Here's the whole damn game. Got your ass. But, uh, the rip, the, the pessimist in me, um, thinking that's, that's, that's not going to be a reality at all. Um, but I mean, considering, um, you know, the wealth of content that we're going to get in this first part of the game, I think it's fine. It'll give us, you know, something to kind of, um, look forward to in the the future parts or however they're taking care of this game. So it's, it's fine. It's not a big deal. We'll probably have a wealth of the characters to get used with, used to and acclimate with anyway. I'm just curious how all of this is going to play out in terms of, you know, there's a lot of questions unanswered how, um, how, uh, will will our progress that we made in uh in this part carry over to the next part? Um, uh, in terms of XP, are you capped? Like, let's say you want to just play the hell out of this first part, um, just just you can't contain yourself, uh, for playing the next part. So how is that gonna like play out? Um, will you will will there will you be capped if you you know get to a certain level? Or, you know, if it will at all be in vain, technically, because you'll maybe be reverted to maybe the, the, the next highest possible level um, that the game will allow you within reason to balance you out for the next part. 
it's um very weird and then is or will the game be like full-blown games in and of themselves where you just play the games separately as as if they're separate titles so like part two is technically like a sequel of an existing game basically kind of like final fantasy 10 and 10 2 and stuff um yeah it's just a lot of questions that aren't answered i i feel and i hope that it's like some reasoning to why they're just calling it final fantasy remake and not notifying or expressing that this is a part or segmented uh remake um i'd say in the best scenario um you buy the buy the game and then you get all the uh remaining parts as free dlc uh in a in a in an ideal world and maybe you know you probably get your expected uh microtransactions in in terms of maybe oh i could get uh make cloud look like a um look like a bitch uh for 50 to <laughs> 50 bucks make cloud look like zach uh, get a Zack skin for like fifteen dollars or something like that. I don't know. I hope they don't. I mean, of course, I'd want everything to be free going forward after this. But at the same time, I mean, it's a company and they're gonna they're they're working the hell out on this uh this damn game churning this game out ideally to completion. But considering Square's uh track record before, you know, with previous Final Fantasy games. Yeah, it's not looking really bright in terms of, you know, getting a part two anytime soon after part one comes out. Um, I mean, at the, probably at the at the earliest, I would say three years, we'll probably see the next one. And then there's the, even the whole other question of how, like, this game is going to be handled next gen as well. Like, uh, will this game be like cross compatible with PS4? Like it'll be technically, uh, made for PS4, but there's going to be maybe be like a upgrade patch or however PS5 handles backwards compatibility for PS4 games. It is, uh, boy, it's a lot of questions unanswered, but you know, pretty certain we'll, we'll get some type of, um, closure if you will. Um, when we beat the game or part of the game. Um, and I guess, I mean, well, I guess somewhat spoilers for like what a 25 year old game. Um, but yeah, red, red 13 is pretty much towards where the game is, um, suspected to end, uh, which is generally the end of Midgar or you leave in Midgar, uh, more or less. So, it kind of makes sense in that respect that like, yeah, it wouldn't really make sense to try and develop a character that you only get to play for what only like maybe an hour or so to build up to the, for then the game to just end uh, kind of be a little jarring, even though maybe that would encourage you to replay the game. But then I, I doubt that would come to play or you being able to do that as well. Cause from a story to standpoint, red 13 isn't even in included from at that point anyway so yeah it's just a lot of questions that hopefully we'll 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 mow down we'll <laughs> we will or we'll we'll riot about it or or let our opinions be known for sure either way so overall i'm fine with it it's it's fine take your time take your time square enix take your time pasta you know um i mean i'm just happy we 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 even are getting this to be honest if I want to be candid with you, because man, what like 20, 2013? No, even like 2005, 2007, I believe, you know, we saw at least a glimpse of what, 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 what a remake could be like, uh, at least specifically for the PS3. But now it's now a reality. It's now happening um delays aside it's 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 a thing now so that's that's just great it's great to even get just get just get a scrump just just get a crumb of this greatness of a of a game of an rpg um you know disclaimer of final fantasy 7 is the only 
um, uh, Final Fantasies I've I've played uh, and beat multiple times. Well, in general, really. Um, so I definitely do have a bias uh, towards it. I have not played any of the other ones uh, because they fail in comparison to this to this great game. Um, fight me, no. <laughs> I do plan to at least at some point whenever my backlog slows down or you know whatever I'll start playing them but uh, at least for now uh, it's going to be so great I guess we'll talk about the demo a little bit later in terms of what I've been playing uh, look mark that uh, but yeah all in all I'm fine with it Red 13 you'll be okay alright it's going to be good to see you See you talk. Might be a little weird, but I love you all the same, Red. Just want you to know that. Just want you to know that. <laughs> a bit more. Um, and in uh, just I don't know news. Uh, Kojima Productions. Uh, specifically, um, uh, the uh, marketing department, not Kojima himself. Uh, had some tweets uh, released earlier this week that uh, particularly last Friday regarding um, some very subtle hints uh, regarding a release date or or basically news regarding whatever they have in tow. So basically it's a picture of um this is a picture of um, the head of communications as well as um, yeah this is so weird man it it's hard to it's hard to really make make of it you know let me let me look this is just weird I'm curious if they took it down they've been retweeting so much all these damn retweets I could do replies let's see interesting so it looks like the tweet is not even here anymore they might have deleted it interesting Oh, no, they didn't. They did not. They did not. Um, so yeah, so basically, uh, there's a picture of, um, presumably the head of the marketing department for Kojima Productions, uh, speaking with the new head of communications for Kojima Productions. And basically there's a lot to decipher from this picture in particular uh, at least the biggest notable one is uh written in his notepad next week which um is when they were, would re- announce something uh but just some weird things to pick up is that the pen soul like says silent i believe let me let me double check that no, the pencil is, says pyramid, which is just weird. Uh, then in his terminology in the tweet, sorry to be silent, everyone. I've been really busy lately. I think I can say more soon about what we are going to. And that was it. I thought there was something else that like, yeah, no, those are the. Yeah, just silent. That's just just a weird use of terminology as well as the pyramid pencil, pyramid head, Silent Hill. I guess you can say it's reaching, but I don't know. That's a little, a little hard to kind of ignore. Not, not, not formulate some enough from that. You know, why would they do that if you know? I don't know. If anything, that does potentially um, 
insinuate that maybe possibly Kojima Productions maybe got good, got got back good with Konami potentially maybe, and maybe they are maybe secretly working on Silent Hills. So maybe this is just something that they just literally put in front of us for us to just you know ah, no not at all. So it's possible, but at least what kind of takes away from that this tweet in a to an extent is that uh Death Stranding uh they did announce that Death Stranding is coming to Steam and Epic Game Store on June second, twenty twenty. So that obviously was the announcement that was hinted at next week. So it kind of takes away from maybe the suspicion of it, but at the same time, maybe it was just, you know, still possibly possible that maybe it's the next project overall after Death Stranding is like, you know, fully done or, you know, they get the PC version out. So I don't know. I, I'd say those are valid suspicions though. You have pyramid on the pencil and it was cl- it's clearly visible in the, on the, on the screenshot. He, you know, if it, I don't know. Yeah. He would have. Yeah. I don't know, man. I could see you could see it both ways, I guess, but I'm leaning more towards um, it. It's it's hard to omit, you know, just saying. So who knows? Maybe a couple years from now, we might get uh, Silent Hills that we've wanted all the all this time. Our dreams may become a reality. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool though. I'm not going to lie. Konami and uh, Kojima. Now Kojima has his own dedicated uh, company. Um, he kind of maybe gets a little bit more freedom now and not so restricted, uh, you know, in the clutches of uh, Konami. So maybe he's kind of, kind of gets the best of both worlds and maybe, maybe uh, might revisit Metal Gear. I mean, that's all, this is all contingent on if he's actually good um, that good with Konami potentially, but I mean, Kojima is the type to, you know, maybe keep it under wraps and then, you know, reveal it later. But at the same time too, Kojima seems like the guy who would just, you know, do this on his own mysteriously via his own tweeting, but maybe he just is starting to trust his company more, um, in terms of, you know, um, going about kind of teasing um, new IPs or, you know, new projects and stuff like that. So it's hard to, it's hard to, um, yeah, man, hard to decipher, but say it's notable either way. Um, yeah, and no, I guess touching back on Death Stranding, uh, it apparently is going to have uh, some Half-Life or Half-Life crossover stuff. Uh, you <laughs> you got Norman Reedus with a damn uh, head crab from Half-Life. And I believe the glove that uh, you see in the Half-Life Alex trailer um, in terms of her hands specifically. Um, apparently, uh, the PC edition will have photo mode, high frame rate, of course, uh, ultra wide monitor support, um, and, and as well as the, the half life stuff I already mentioned. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I don't see myself getting this again cause I kind of got my fix from, uh, I don't know though, man, just looking graphically great. Um, even more so to play it again. Hmm. That's tempting. Yeah. Cause I don't think Death Stranding was 60 FPS. Ooh. Yeah. Probably if it goes on sale, I would highly consider it, but probably after it's been out and then it goes on sale eventually, that's probably when I would bite. But overall, man, pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Um, oh boy. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of just disappointment and just speculation 
and ten full hats and whatnot. Um, there was uh, some news last Friday, of course, after uh, last episode uh, of some weird uh, new art on Rockstar Games' site. Um, it it was it was pretty subjective. It was very like. It led to a lot of speculation amongst us all in terms of maybe it is hidden at another game and and all of that. But, um, you know, people were saying, oh, it looks like bully because the first one looks like somewhat of an American flag ish type deal. And then the one below it is like a golden robot holding a rock star logo as well. So people were basically, I think, just thinking pretty much all of the titles, really. But I'd say the most common were uh, bully. Uh, I know myself, I suspected, uh, agent possibly, and I guess another Grand Theft Auto, um, as well as Manhunt. I, I just want to just put that out there, but, uh, turns out we were all pretty damn wrong and jokes are on us. Uh, we should have, should be getting our clown noses shortly because we are some damn clowns. Um, People were also thinking GTA six as well, but, um, yeah, it was none of that (laughs) at all. So now we, we looked dumb. We looked dumb and it was the debunked specifically in a Kotaku article, uh, in regards to no, that robot image is not teasing GTA six. You dumb asses. (laughs) But, um, I forgot what was the. What was the definitive giveaway? I guess it wasn't really, but um, let's see. Yeah, I guess it's because Rockstar did a whole new with, you know, their store that they recently, um, uh, got up off the ground. Uh, I think it's just in, in turn with their website redesign. So, you know us though. We were quick, like, oh, oh, sh- oh shoot, GTA six. Yeah. Um, but that was not it. That was not it. That ain't it, chief. Chief, that ain't it. So now we all look like idiots. But it's cool. It's cool. You did it to yourself, Rockstar, for, you know, waiting so long to reveal any details or trailer for the next GTA. It's all your fault. I'm just saying. Uh, Next in news, um, The Last of Us um, is actually getting a TV show. So apparently um, Craig Mazin, the creator of Chernobyl, um, I still need to see that. I heard it was really good of HCO is will be uh, adapting the last of us, um, which is obviously the greatness, um, that is coming out with a sequel very soon, not very soon, but pretty soon. Um, and apparently the last of us movie, I think they did announce that way back, but actually that got canceled to be a movie instead of the, I mean, to be a, uh, episodic, TV show instead of a movie, which I think is pretty cool. But I guess my biggest concern is that, uh, it's going to be very similar to the walking dead. Cause I mean, you get a lot of the same vibes, um, with the walking dead in terms, you know, survival zombies, um, as well as, you know, people, um, or, you know, the dynamic of evil people, you know, trying to survive compared to you, in your faction and stuff like that. So it's a lot to kind of, I don't know, divulge and, you know, kind of decipher between each when you think about it. Um, actually, well, not much really there. I feel like it, I'm, I guess more and more anything. That's at least my initial suspicion. I hope to be wrong, of course, but at least that's my initial suspicion going in or knowing about this now. And then, uh, Neil Druckmann, uh, you know, who is the writer director of the last of us, uh, game as well as the, the sequel, 
um, is also going to be involved. So that's pretty good to hear. Um, and you know, he has that, he definitely has that knack, um, for writing and, uh, obviously by the testament to the greatness of, uh, the last of us game in of itself and more than likely the last of us part two. So pretty cool. I'm definitely down to watch it. Um, HBO of all people. I'm surprised it wouldn't be some Netflix like, uh, but HBO makes sense too. You know, video games are getting that, getting to that level, man. It's kind of, it's kind of hard. It's still hard to fathom how like established video games and as media is, is being more mainstream mainline. And now, you know, you're getting um, more consistent crossovers with other media, which is totally understandable when you think about it. So, I love it. I love it. I, uh, boy, I guess, uh, staying in relation to, uh, uh, video game movie adaptation news, video game media adaptation news. Oh boy. Uh, I, I just got, I just got irritated just seeing this image. So, uh, last Friday, uh, the monster hunter, movie which is being directed by who is the dude again Ugh. I forgot Paul W Paul W.S. Anderson who basically obliterated the Resident Evil uh, movies um, and just tarnished the Resident Evil name in regards to um, Resident Evil as a movie in movie form except for the, uh, the CGI ones the CGI ones are pretty good though but uh, otherwise, ugh. so ugh, I just I, I can't even contain myself to talk about this. Ugh. Um, mm, I'm just like it really literally annoyed, man. Just looking at this damn posters. Ugh. So, yeah, so. They uh, released the posters for Monster Hunter and man, it's just so many things wrong with this. These damn posters, man. Boy. Let's let's try to start with a positive. Let's let's try with say something nice. Um, I will give credit for the weapons. Uh, They got the great sword action going on with Mila Jovovich. Don't know why you're in a nut, yet another Capcom related movie by Paul W.S. Anderson. Huh? Not sure. Maybe because you're having sex with him. I don't know. A little weird. Huh? Huh? Um, the weapons are accurate. I, I could give you the costumes, but that's about, that's pretty much where it ends. Uh, First big, just what in the, what in the f- is a uh, freaking, okay, you got the poster, right? Then you got Mila Jovovich just looking at you, turned around with a sword on her shoulder. She ain't that strong. She ain't that strong. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Um, maybe she is. I ain't going, I ain't going to, I'm going to give her the benefit of that Monster Hunters, they don't look strong, but they do be, they do be whiffing, whiffing them damn swords. I give, I give you that at least. Um, but man, my biggest freaking gripe. And I, 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 I did a little mini rant on Twitter about this biggest freaking gripe with this damn movie poster. Just a poster is how you going to have It's one, one It's called Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. How you gonna have a Monster Hunter poster but have no monsters? Please tell me how that calculates. Please tell somebody show me the Venn diagram of how that works. Cause I like to know. And then on top of that, all this open space and nobody thought, huh? Huh, maybe uh this is called Monster Hunter, right? Why don't we um why don't we put like a Rathalos in there? That's the that's the trademark monster for Monster Hunter in general, right? Huh. You just put them flying in the background. Why not? 
And maybe just put them fighting maybe another Rathalos or, or, or another monster. Huh. Could do that. But they didn't. So now it's just all this open blank space for no apparent reason. And I know this this is probably breaking some type of uh um design rule of thumb. Uh, I'm certain because it's very distracting, honestly, to me. Because it's all this open space. And it, on top of that, it even seems like that they were going to do it. And then they backed out for whatever reason, maybe because of fear of backlash of uh, people, you know, ripping a hole in the movie already, which it, it doesn't even matter because I'm already ripping a move, a hole in this damn movie to begin with. So, I mean, you might as well, well have been better off just showing it. Um, yeah, man, that is my, I, I, I don't even haven't even seen a trailer of the damn movie and I'm already, I'm already annoyed. I'm already, I'm, I, I pretty much hate the movie already because ugh, if you just do this and, uh, yeah. So, uh, keep on the lookout whenever this comes out. Boy, I'm about to hate watch the hell out of this movie. Might be the first movie I hate watch. For real. Uh, PG-13. Well, but, you know, yeah, Monster Hunter is pretty family friendly. I give it that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find find something to rip, but that's the biggest one, really. I mean, I could go on Mila Jovovich. Why are you here? You Why are you in a Monster Hunter game? Uh, they're gonna they're gonna butcher the hell out of this movie already. Not no 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 offense, Milo, but I mean, what is you doing? What are you doing? Maybe they'll maybe they'll try to cross over with <laughs> Resident Evil with the Resident Evil movies, which yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, uh, I don't it, uh, I don't even know I don't even know anymore. Uh, the Monster Hunter iconography of the, the, the font and everything. Ugh. And it was just, it's so easy. They could have just clearly researched the video games and they see and pretty much every cover I could think of has a monster on it. Generally the flagship monster or, you know, the big, you know, the, the appealing monster or new monster for the, for the game. They could have clearly did that. They they, they they had the clear references there. Just a quick ass Google search. All it would have took literally just like what? Two, three minutes of research. Oh, let me look at the Monster Hunter video games. Every damn cover clearly has a monster on it. It's so simple. And people are gonna, people are trying to defend the bull crap. This BS about, um, about uh you know hey well um the monsters aren't quite done yet then don't release the damn poster don't release the damn poster then it's so so damn simple don't release the damn poster if the monsters aren't ready yet simple as that give a damn if it's coming out september 4th Release the posters when you got the monsters ready. Don't release this crap with no damn, no, all this open space. Fucking, fucking Mila Jovovich with a damn great sword. Trying to look cool. I mean, she kind of looked cool. I, I give her that. She looked like she ready to, ready to cut some monsters. I give her that. I give her that. I'll give you that, Mila Jovovich. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Tony Ja, you looking kind of cool too. You looking like, hey, I got this. I got this bow. Somebody come at me. They're going to get these bows. I'm going to shoot somebody. I give you that. I give you that, Tony Ja. You'll get that. Otherwise, I am not pleased at all. As a pretty big Monster Hunter fan, I am not pleased. And I guess that's that's always been my gripe with video game related movies, at least specifically. And I'm not asking to like straight up just totally cater towards the fans and not people who've never heard of Monster Hunter, the video game before. 
But I think there is a pretty good balance you can have in terms of appeasing the hardcore fans of of Monster Hunter or, I mean, general fans of Monster Hunter regardless, as well as, you know, uh, catering to folks that have never been introduced to Monster Hunter before. There definitely can be a balance made and just Paul W.S. Anderson does not know it. It just feels like he just picks, oh, yeah, this is kind of cool. And then, uh, you know what? I'm just going to do my own thing. I don't give a fuck about you fans. That's that. Uh, you could clearly see that in the Resident Evil movies where he just he just sh- on everything. Literally. Shits on everything, you know, it's unfortunate. Because this could be in better hands and be a legit movie because I, I can say it does have the le- it, it does have the potential to be be something decent in terms of just the the, the concept of you know a monster hunter movie but Paul W.S. Anderson I don't know man and considering his clear track re- record of d- uh, demolishing the Resident Evil franchise in movie form I just don't know man ah, enough of my rant let me get off my soapbox my blood pressure back down. Uh, next topic of discussion. Uh, boy, I think uh, it's not really, I guess, necessarily noteworthy, but I think it's something that we're bringing attention to. So, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare, of course. I believe in a couple past episodes we talked about uh the battle royale, you know, rumors and whatnot. But boy, man. I swear, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is like the damn, damn flirt, the girl that flirts with you at work consistently, um, giving you the blue balls all, all every, every day for years and, and no payoff <laughs> because boy, man, um, Jesus. So I guess to give a little backstory that apparently um, with the release of season two specifically, there's clearly a lot of, you know, blatant hints that, uh, there, there's going to be a battle royale mode of some sort. And then, uh, eventually it came to be leaked or it was leaked that, uh, it, it's called war zone. Uh, so within the trailer, the initial trailer for season two, um, you clearly have blatant signs that it, there, there's going to be some battle royale included you have players literally jumping out of a moving plane, which is the traditional format of battle royale games. Hence, people jump out of a uh, plane and parachute onto land to, you know, find and scavenge items and, you know, fight it out, duke it out to the last person wins. So you have that clearly, which is basically literally majority of that trailer was, uh, battle royale hints um in terms of you know people getting shot um a lot of basically shooting other players and then you know of course the parachuting and then the large ass map they were basically expanded to show the scale of the whole map and all that so you have that going into play and then on top of that you have freaking um uh they literally um patched in a new segment in the main menu that says classified. So, uh, it's hard to believe that it's any other mode, but battle Royale, especially if, you know, call of duty, uh, black ops four is concerned in terms of, you know, battle Royale too. So you kind of have that going into play. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you have some of the, the, the leaks of the, the folks. Um, I know we talked maybe briefly about it before, but you know, uh, some of the streamers and, you know, content creators basically uh, leaking um, some details uh, regarding the Battle Royale mode. And those people were getting straight up striked, uh, counts removed, uh, suspended, all of the above. So um, Infinity Ward or Activision in general hasn't really been known to do that before. 
but uh, it's kind of a weird coincidence that now they're doing it with this game or this uh, rumor mode. So, I mean, the only reason they would do that is if it's true or if there is a, some legitimate merit to that. Um, so that leads to this whole damn uh, kind of um, rabbit hole of basically just dick tease <laughs> just literally throughout the whole past few weeks, basically. So, you know, I think in part with a lot of us just, just formulating our own suspicions and, and theories. And then, uh, now we have, um, uh, I guess apparently the big rumor date was going to be March 3rd. Um, which was rumored in a lot of the, the game, uh, game like, uh, items or I guess game textures and, and, uh, objects where it had three, three, uh, specifically, uh, written on them, which is obviously, um, March 3rd, uh, which did pass. And yet we have no battle royale, but I guess the biggest frustrating thing about it is that is the fact that infinity ward isn't even acknowledging it or speaking on it, which is kind of the, I guess the irritating part where they're not acknowledging it or speaking anything of it or any like ounce of it, or like just saying, Hey, (laughs) like give the, give the standard statement guys, we've heard you. Um, we did not communicate war zone. Well, but Rest assured, we're going to give you an astounding experience that you've never seen before. Something like that, but no, we didn't get that either. So I think it's pretty legitimate for, you know, a lot of the fans to be kind of upset about, you know, not getting anything like tell us something like it exists. It's in the works. What have you, but nothing, nothing. So in, 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 ter- in line with that, um, you, there was a, there was a rumor going around that could be legitimate that apparently that there was an event where a lot of, uh, big content creators, uh, were invited to play the mode, uh, exclusively, I guess, amongst each other. Um, and apparently, uh, they got, um, infinity war, got a lot of backlash saying that they, uh, they didn't like it at all. Like just the current implementations of the mode and all that weren't really liking it. N- not one bit. So, uh, maybe that, uh, well, I mean, obviously that got infinity war to go back to the drawing board, try to fix, uh, what was not liked about the mode. So, that's, I guess my suspicion is probably what happened that like, you know, infinity war was, was basically set and ready more than likely maybe to drop Warzone by this week, but, um, maybe due to the backlash of the, you know, uh, exclusive content creators that were able to play it, um, maybe got them to push back. Uh, maybe their originally planned date, which, you know, maybe was something they didn't really see before or see happening. So it's that, I mean, that, that in of, in of itself is still speculation, but who knows? But I mean, I feel like at some point, I feel like we are deserve some explanation in terms of what happened actually that, you know, like, Hey, (laughs) the same spiel guys, we've heard you. (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we did not communicate as well. Let's tell you what happened. Uh, we did have an event with all the content creators and, uh, they just didn't like the mold. So we did not feel comfortable, uh, releasing this mold to you guys, knowing that, uh, at least the initial few that we trusted will have a very valid, uh, input in terms of the, the success of this game, not be that great. So that's what led us to hold the game uh, mode until uh, further, you know, testing, review, what have you. So that seems like a legitimate, um, you know, thing that happened. But I think we still deserved 
uh, the transparency of it. If that is the case that, you know, saying, Hey, um, war zone is, is, is a thing where we're working on it. Um, it will be out, um, when it's ready. Even that, I think that that would definitely, uh, satiate a lot of people in terms of just like this whole dick tease blue ball game of not telling us a, not a damn thing about the mold, even though it's been heavily, uh, leaked in a lot of cases, a lot of ass, um, assets regarding the game mode and all that. So it's, 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 it's unfortunate. I mean, even me, I'm not even a big battle royale player. Really? I maybe play maybe a couple matches here and there, but not consistently enough, which I think this mode, considering how much I like the main game and, you know, mechanics and, uh, engine of, uh, modern warfare would definitely get me to really play, um, war zone, I think, uh, pretty consistently. So we'll get that payoff one day. These nuts going to be, be, uh, be relieved, <laughs> be, be relieved at some point. Hopefully we'll see. I guess one aspect too, uh, at least I guess maybe does kind of subside us. I don't know, but, uh, the heavily kind of, uh, rumored or, um, not really rumored, but something that was in the works, but we never, I guess heard about was the Tamagunchi, which I guess is supposed to be like a Neo pet, but for call of duty. And I guess like when you get kills and maybe when you maybe meet specific conditions, like, I don't know, maybe get like a, a juggernaut or AC one thirty or something that maybe you'll level it up or make it grow or feed it or something like that. I'm actually, to be honest, kind of curious about it, but I mean, it costs like, I think $10 for it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'll probably look at some YouTube videos, see how it actually plays or, if it's even worth it. Um, but yeah, uh, I thought that was pretty interesting, uh, because that was one thing I always wondered. I thought it was like maybe some exclusive, like you had to get like pizza rolls that came with the code for that specifically or something like that. But, um, I don't know, man overall. Yeah, it is fine. But I, I felt, I thought it was, uh, worth breaking up because apparently this was the supposed date that it was apparently going to come out, but you know, nobody knows anymore. Nobody knows anymore. Nobody, a uh, pretty cool aspect, uh, at least, uh, in regards to God of war specifically recently, apparently, uh, a hacker, um, basically managed to hack the camera, uh, for the game and basically found some really funny uh, uh, Easter eggs in terms of the game, in terms of like just random weird characters, like doing weird poses and um, just things you wouldn't really notice, um, obviously with the main game, with the standard camera. So I thought that was cool. Just a, just a mention real quick, but you know, uh, Lance McDonald is the man that, uh, that made it happen. So, um, yeah, just, just wanted to put that out there. That's all. Um, like that. I'm gonna like that. I thought I liked it, but I'm gonna like it again. Did I take my like back? I don't want to take my like back. Let me try one more time. I think that's it. Okay. So, uh, let's get into, um, what I've been playing. Um, and you know what I've been playing. You, you damn know what we've been, you, you damn know. All right. Um, of course, modern warfare Been playing that pretty consistently. This is man. This is literally the longest I played modern warfare since, uh, I don't for too, man. I, I feel like I keep saying it, but I mean, it's so damn good. So damn engaging. Um, just the, just the gunplay and just the, uh, challenges have been really fun to kind of do not too hard. Um, but at the same time, not too easy. I think they keep that sweet spot. At least a lot of it is, uh, just rewarding you for playing the game for the most part. So 
Uh, overall, been been pretty much enjoying my time with the game so far. Uh, still ranking up the guns. Uh, managed to actually get to I think with the battle pass level thirty. I think I'm at thirty eight ish. So I did get the the free guns that you get uh, when you get to that. Uh, I think thirty one is the is gets both. I think ten is the first one and thirty one is the SMG. But I think they're also dropping a new another gun later in another uh, update to my understanding. So, um, and what else? I guess this past weekend uh, we had some folks over. I played uh, played some Smash Brothers mainly, um, getting my ass whooped and uh, not liking it. But you know what? It's fine. Uh, Smash is always fun, though, man. I mean, even, regardless of your skill level. I think it's always fun to play and you can generally always um, measure out or kind of balance <laughs> in terms of maybe the more skilled players and stuff with just the randomness of <laughs> Smash, which I think is also kind of the fun appeal of it as well. You know, just, oh, damn, this damn uh, this damn uh, Smash ball just came out of nowhere. Now I'm about to decimate everybody. Dynamics like that, of course, so. Also been playing uh the Outer Worlds. Actually been getting back into that. Um, that's been man. That's been pretty fun. It is so so much scratching uh that Fallout itch I've been having because it's been a while since I played Fallout Four. I kind of wanted to get back into the um finish up the DLC because I did miss out on a lot of the DLC for that game. I think I played one of them, um New Harbor or something like that. I want to say. Um, but yeah, man, Outer Worlds is scratching that itch so damn well. Um, I'm trying to optimize for PC, um, cause I like played it on Xbox and I was like, uh, I don't really feel like playing this in 30 FPS when I of course have the option to play it in 60 FPS, um, with some tinkering, which I'm still trying to mess with. I've been looking like at some digital foundry videos to kind of get it optimized how I want. It's not, doesn't feel like I'm getting it to how I completely want it, but you know, been trying to mess with like Nvidia inspector, which basically lets you capitalize on SLI. If you don't have, um, if a game doesn't natively support SLI, you know, to get more juice power uh, performance out of, uh, the outer worlds, um, or, you know, any PC game basically, but, been tinkering around with that and you know got got to some decent level but kind of you know as any pc gamer will tell you want to just want to optimize it just optimize it a little bit more you know just just finesse it just a little bit more so um and of course of course couldn't couldn't could not could not ignore uh the final fantasy 7 demo of course they wanted to drop it like at midnight on like a damn work night for me. Um, I guess for other people's like generally, I guess, it, well, it seems like the release time for a lot of stuff online, uh, is varies greatly. Um, uh, it, I guess in some cases it could be 2 AM in other cases, it could be exactly at, uh, you know, 12 PM, um, or 12 AM. Um, it, it just really varies overall, but, of course, Square Enix wanted to want to be a bitch <laughs> and dropped his damn demo on a Sunday night. People got to work in the damn damn morning. So I had to wait until Monday <laughs> and play it. And boy, I am very impressed with uh, the demo, man. It is. Uh, it I think it really um, reaches a very great balance in terms of, you know, mixing the old with the new, which is, I think is always a very tricky, slippery slope when it comes to remakes specifically, of course, um, you know, where you, you feel like you're, you, you potentially could be changing the game too much from maybe the identity that you're kind of going off of from the original game. And yeah, man, it's just I feel like they really, finessed it greatly because uh it, it, it it's more actiony than of course the original but 
at the same time, it you still get that tactical vibe from from the game as well. So if you want, you can kind of be a bit slower. And uh, they even have a mode for, you know, diehard FF7 fans that aren't maybe a fan of the new system where basically the game will automatically play for you. And then you have time to, you know, utilize your abilities uh, whenever they, you know, charge up. Which when you think about it is basically essentially just like the uh, original game uh, without the element of, you know, uh, the turn based side of it, um, which is pretty cool. I think that that is a pretty much an ingenious uh, kind of way to kind of appease both ends of the party, I say. Of course, you're going to have the, the people like, no, I don't like it. No, I don't like this at all. This is horrible. I hate this game. This is such a horrible game. Final Fantasy 7, 6, you know, you got those. You guys, <laughs> you always going to have them, them dudes. But um, I really am very pleased with uh, how they did it so far, uh, at least from what we've seen. Well, obviously, it's going to be indicative of the main game, but I'm very satisfied with uh, what I played. So uh, I guess at least to kind of go through the demos, very, fairly brief for the most part, but you definitely get a good general concept of what to expect of the main game, which is the pers- uh, purpose of a damn demo anyway, of course. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, so basically you're in the uh, Midgar, uh, well, I guess the Shinra building of Midgar, basically the first part of the game uh, from the original where you're going through, uh, the Midgar or Shinra. Totally forgot what, what actually is that place? We're just going to say Shinra for purposes, Shinra, like, uh, hideout. So you go there and you basically, you know, doing pretty much everything. And, you know, you meet all the, the characters, which is pretty cool. Um, probably the most notable was, uh, the one dude from breaking bad is actually the voice of, uh, I believe wedge. Um, I totally, I totally did. I thought that was just maybe some dude that sounded like him, but I guess they legitimately got him voiced in, in the game, which is pretty cool. It's like, and he, his voice matches so well with that guy. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. I guess apparently, uh, Jesse Pinkman or, uh, Ryan, Ryan something. I'm just calling him Jesse Pinkman because that's, that's the best I know him as. Uh, I guess he apparently was in um, Final Fantasy 12 or 14. I think he did voice work in that. So I'm guessing maybe through the grapevine, you know, he maybe hooked him up in, in getting that role probably. Um, cool nonetheless. That was, was pretty cool. Totally accurate of that of that character, I'd say. Um, so, you know, getting, getting, meeting up with the characters and stuff was pretty cool. Uh, I guess to kind of go over the characters, um, you got Jesse. Oh man. Of course I'm drawing a blank of the characters now, Jesse. And then who's the other guy? Let me, let me jog my memory. Let me jog my memory. Just to be sure. Uh, let's see. Who? You had Jesse. I don't think they cover the side characters, but yeah, because they're side characters. Jesse Wedge. And the one dude, the one dude that's good with lock and stuff or whatever. Damn it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, boy, I'm just telling you, Jesse, uh, she needs some damn, she need like the biggest jug of water. You need to give her a whole damn pool because her ass is thirst. He, you hear me? Thirst. He, she is straight fiending. With some cloud strife, I'm just saying. <laughs> just just a few uh few minutes of that demo, boy. 
she just she might as well just hopped on cloud and just did the deed right there i'm just saying all them all them uh all them flirting uh remarks and all that she basically like cloud i mean if if we weren't in this scenario i mean you could just do me right now i'm just i'm just saying cloud if you if you don't mind i mean forget uh tifa forget Aerith. Get get with Jesse. <laughs> thirst, the thirst. I was I was getting dehydrated. <laughs> she was making me dehydrated though, <laughs> playing the damn game. Uh, that was funny though. But but at the same time, very accurate of how she was portrayed in the Final Fantasy VII original. So. I got to got to give credit where credit's due, but man. <laughs> so technically they did translate that very well. Just they translated uh Jesse's thirst. So good on you uh Square Enix. And I guess, you know, of course, uh the other most notable character, uh Barrett. I totally love love Barrett how they did uh treat him in this. Um, I know a lot of people are saying, oh man, uh, he's just so over the top, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's what he was like in the original. So, I mean, it, it, it's pretty accurate of the original. Uh, but I mean, even then at the same time in the remake, he still, uh, has some sensible moments. So it's not like he's always on 10 all the time. He does have his periods where he is a little bit more chill. Um, but I like it. I, I love his, uh, over the top, just, 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 just over the top, but at the same time, not like blatantly racist, you know what I mean? Like at least the game was kind of hitting on, I felt, you know, in the original game where, you know, he's like a Mr. T ripoff, but I feel like they really did a nice balance of making him find his own kind of groove in essence, at least how I feel. I love him. I love him though. He's great. Barrett is Barrett is dope. I saw I caught one uh after we battled in the demo uh when I was playing. He's like duh, 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 duh. you know stuff like that is great. I'm just saying. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I loved him. I loved him. It was very accurate to how he was in the original. Uh so I mean personally I don't have no problem with that. But at the same time, not making him just be blatantly racist, like, oh, hey, hey, you cloud, uh, oh boy, I'm just a man, I'm your master, aren't I, man, boy, man, hope they, hope they don't got any cotton here, cause boy, I'm not feeling like picking any cotton today, you know, something like that. I'm like, all right, <laughs> okay, Square Enix, all right, you, you, <laughs> you hitting a little too on the nose right now. I'm gonna need y'all to chill out, but no, no, it was uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed them. I liked, I liked what they did with them. Um, and then cloud cloud was cool. I, I liked him. I liked he, he felt pretty accurate to how I, how I would think he is in the main, um, you know, if he were to be voiced, uh, he kind of has a somewhat cockiness similar to Dante, but at the same time, uh, a bit stoic, which, you know, I think is pretty accurate for his character. So, I mean, personally, I, I I liked him as well. You know, he had his <laughs> he had his kind of like his one liners and stuff. Yeah, that's my line, you know, stuff like that. I, I I liked it. I loved it. I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I don't know. I feel like I mean, I, I would have had. I think if if they could have been off or wrong, I I feel like I wouldn't have liked it. But I think they did a pretty good job of trying to portray what you know was uh not voiced in the main game, I guess outside of maybe the other reference point being the, um, the, uh, Advent children movie. And I guess technically the other, the, um, crisis core and stuff like that. But I love it. Love it. Um, but yeah, overall, very pleased with the characters. Um, at least from what I saw, uh, totally love it. Um, combat again, was pretty good. Um, I love the kind of, you get some little bit more depth where you do are, where you are in control, but you can like switch stances and kind of mix that up as well as the magic. I do like how you can have your, uh, your most commonly used, um, spells or abilities, a uh, hot keyed, uh, you know, with the L one modifier, um, which kind of, if you want to 
not necessarily be too tactical. You can just, you know, kind of play it in that way, which I think is, again, just a great balance of appeasing both parties where, you know, if you want to go that route, you can, or if you need a breather, you can, or if you want to just play straight up action, uh, you can pretty much essentially do that as well. So good job. Good job, Square Enix. I am very hyped, more hyped than actually I was initially, I'd say just now being able to play it and get a feel and concept and idea frame of reference for how I will be able to play this when it comes out. I am very pleased. I have to say I am very, very satisfied. You hear me? I'm super satisfied. I am so damn hype for this damn game to come out. Hype so close to very close, fairly close. Um, I forgot about uh, mentioning uh, there's this dumbass promotion too with Butterflinger. Did I mention this before? I don't think I did. Um, I think I did. Actually, no, I think I did mention it last episode. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to mention it again. But yeah, man, basically the Butterfinger thing. So damn weird. But again, that's kind of in line with uh, Square Enix so far. Just cross promotion with other stuff. So, yeah. There's that. Um, but yeah, outside of that, that's pretty much what all I've been playing. Um, not really nothing outside of that. Notable. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, if you, um, yeah, I think that'll end it. But, yeah, if you guys got any questions you'd like to submit to the show, Feel free to submit them at a switch TV at gmail.com. Um, if you're listening to this podcast on your respective podcasted platforms, I guess I'm, I'm not sure where you would be, I guess outside of maybe t- Twitch or YouTube, um, uh, feel free to like rate, uh, subscribe, any feedback, good or bad is appreciated. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, still chugging away at uh getting the uh getting these on YouTube. Um what else? Is that all? I think that's it. Um yeah, of course, as always, thanks for listening and or watching guys. Uh I forgot as well, you can always catch this live on Twitch TV slash A Switch uh at seven PM PST where I do record this live um as well. Um, yeah, until next time, guys.